let's talk about how much of the offensive issues at Penn State were Braden Locke, how much was play calling, and, and how much were the other pieces not helping out enough? Locked on Badgers, let's go. You are Locked on Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I'm Earl Stein Harris, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're talking initial thoughts on Iowa, a little bit about Braden Locke, and um, maybe the Penn State loss also wasn't quite as bad as it looked. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. And let's bring in Curtis. People have asked. Asked me, Curtis, several times, where is Curtis this week? Is he going to own some of those takes? So let me turn it over to you. For those who who don't know, maybe didn't watch last week, Curtis was, I would say, confident in this being a close game, confident in Wisconsin's ability to control the line of scrimmage. Um, Thoughts on this one, Curtis? Yeah, absolutely. Man, we really set the uh, Penn State in a blaze last week, didn't we? So I've got uh, got some messages. Really quick, even before you get started, somebody DM'd me today, like, Penn State fans are ruthless. And by the way, you, you win, you deserve all the flowers. Like, I, I don't hate on that. I really don't. I got a DM of a Penn State guy giving me the W's down, like, we're Texas. Have you? How do you never, he's impressive. like, hey, Wisconsin, W's down. I mean, that's like, fine. They can, they, you know what? Hey, they won this time. Um, good for oh. them. You know, I don't that, you know, the Internet, it is the Internet. You're going to see some some crazy things on it. So that stuff isn't is what it is. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think the one thing that um, that I definitely was wrong on is I think this uh, defensive front was significantly more athletic than it showed on film. And and I will say this in, in my defense, I do think that that was their best game that they played so far this season. Uh, they were flying all over the place. They were making plays. Um, you know, I, I do remember, though, in the beginning of that show, I told you, I said, I think they're overrated. I don't know if they're a championship caliber team. I don't know if Saturday really changes that for me. I, I think, you know, um, I, I didn't think we, I thought I said, you know, Hey, we might not be the ones that expose them this week, but at the end of the day, you know, they still have some fundamental flaws. Quite frankly, they weren't even able to get to lock. Um, there was no sacks. I don't even think they hit them. So, you know, that was one thing our offensive line did well, but credit to them, especially in the run game. I mean, they were, they were getting right in the, in the holes and, and stopping our run, you know, at the point of attack. And, uh, so they did a tremendous job with that. Um, maybe my message was played in their locker room before the game. Maybe I helped them out. So you're welcome, Penn State fans. But um, but otherwise, no, I mean, uh, then, you you know, you look at the offense or when they were on offense, we were on defense. Let me, let me real quick, because I, I do want to point out this, because one of the things we talked about was were they possibly going to overlook Wisconsin a tiny bit because uh, Ohio State was coming up? Like, could that be a bit of a – they came in ready to play. Like, yeah, so you I don't think they did. I mean, it didn't look like they overlooked us. And I, I didn't – from the jump, I thought we had a hard time establishing the run. We had one big run with Walker, but I don't think from the jump we have to run the ball, right? And I know we're going to get into it. I think they controlled that from the get go. Yeah, no, I don't think, and, and I got the sense from you know a couple of Penn State podcasts last week that they weren't going to overlook this game. I think they knew the spot it was in as a night game at Camp Randall, you know, a traditionally difficult place to play, and um, so I think they knew going into it, hey, this is going to be a game. We can't we can't overlook this team. We got to come out. We got to play hard. We got to play physical because they're going to want to be physical. And you know, taking it back to us, we were very physical in that game, uh, especially on defense. Uh, when you go back and, and, and watch the All Twenty Two film, I think we coached our defense about as good as we could have given the circumstances. And I'll, I'll tell you, this is the circumstance. The other thing that I think maybe I underestimated a little bit, Cole and Nikki, in my opinion, is by far the best offense coordinator I've seen this season, and it's not even remotely close. I mean, we watched the Boar. Um, I've watched, you know, Hypo at Tennessee. Uh, you know, uh, Chip Kelly at Ohio State. Cole Nikki is just on a different level from that. And it's like, you know, you talk about like, oh, this is, you know, entry level offense, graduate level offense. You know, we like to think that maybe Braden Locke understands the offense at a graduate level. Well, Cole Nikki's working on PhD level. I'm developing new atoms and figuring out new science level of offense. I mean, the types of things he was doing with his formational shifts, his adjustments, and things like that alone were so complex yet made so simple for their offense to execute that players were getting, you know, six, seven yards on first down before we even were able to touch them. And it wasn't because their offensive line was dominant. Again, I said this last week, if they play a straight up and if they have to rely on their offensive line to make the plays happen, I don't think that they're going to be able to do a lot on offense. And this was probably one of the first all 22s I've seen where you really saw a lot of success out of our front hills. Barton, uh, 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 Neil, they were they were able to to beat 
their one-on-one matchups quite often. And it just didn't matter because of what Penn State was doing. Yeah. They they would they would get beat, but then they would have an RPO where you had to watch out for Tyler Warren. You had to watch out for Nick Singleton. You had to watch out for Ketron Allen. And then in the second half, when Drupula came in, you had to watch out for him too. And I think that was just one too many things too many for this defense to be able to handle effectively. Well, we were watching this. So we were there, obviously, uh, Justin, myself, for Jeeve. There were some other Badger fans as well, uh, 60, 70,000 other Badger fans. But we were watching it. And it's just so difficult to follow the eye candy from from the stands. And you can just see the defensive keys not being there because of that. Like the versatility of that offense, the different weapons, but it's the motion. And then it's the RPO on top of that. Then it's the wrinkle spread into the RPO. Like it was, it's, it's hats off. And someone told me during the game, like, why can't we, why can't we do that? And I'm like, because that offensive coordinator is a different dude. Like you can't. It is different. Say, and that's, well, and that's just- what I wanted to say. Like, you know, you, I think. Trestle a, a good co- is a good coordinator, right? But I don't think he's the best coordinator in the game. And I don't think he would think that he's the best quarterback or coordinator in the game. And I don't think, you know, Fickle would even say something like that. But when you're playing against a guy who I think truly is just a step above in terms of intelligence and being able to, you know, mad, mad scientists draw up plays and draw up an offense that reads off itself, feeds off itself, and able to utilize every single player. When I say they utilize – every single player you're seeing the receivers go in motion they're crack blocking on the backside like you know you you got two or three tight ends that are you know the nope. double and triple team in uh, our defensive ends or, or or tackles or whatever and they're setting up these looks you know you're running oh, that going in motion like i mean you're running a you're running a speed option rpo handoff with you know katron allen going forward you have nick singleton coming behind you and then you shovel it to uh, Warren, who's lined up on the line at the start of the play, who motioned from the other side of the field to start the play. So it's like these little things, they're just so they're so high level, but he does such a good job of making it simple such that a team can pick it up in a year and and and, and effectively execute that offense. And it's the same well, thing with the with Perbula. Yeah, let's let's pause here because I do want to get into lock with you on this one before we shift out of the Penn State game, because we do want to talk a little bit about offense, Iowa. What would you grade lock in this game? I just want to start there because then the next segment I want to get into how much of this because I think you and I agree the defense played well enough against Penn State. Like that was a yeoman's effort on defense. It was the offense in general that let let the team down in that game. I think we're on the same page there. Yeah. What would you just give lock as a grade to start with? So when you look at the game and you watch just lock, I'd give him probably a C minus to a D. Not enough because he didn't play like enough. You know, I know a lot of Badger fans probably pitchforking at me right now. I encourage you to go back and watch the game. I know a lot of you are also going to say, oh, it's too painful. I don't want to do that. It's like, All right, well, then just be wrong. It's fine. But uh, what I'll say is Locke was Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde in this game. There were some times where he made some throws that were spot on the money, perfect timing, perfect read, perfect execution. And then there were times where I thought to myself, man, I wonder if uh, Graham Mertz still has some eligibility because uh, this isn't going to work. So, you know, it was it was one of those games where you saw some good highs and some very, very low lows. Right. And so that's why when I look at this game, I can't give him an F because the other part of this is I think he finished what he was 22 for 42 or something like that. Uh, so yeah. a little over 50 percent completion percentage. There was at least and I don't know where this other number came from. There are seven drops that I counted on the all 22 seven. All right. Now, I don't know where the five came from. I think there was five in the first half. There were seven drops. And then there was two passes that were broken up that you could argue the receiver could have fought that better, maybe caught the ball, made the play. Um, one was with C.J. Williams. And then one was with, I think, uh, Will Pauling, where it was a pass breakup technically, but they probably could have caught it. If you factor that in, you give them an adjusting completion percentage, it's 72 percent. And on top of that, those passes that were dropped were right in the hands of receivers. We don't remember them because they were dropped. There was also a really great play on a third down where he is able to extend the play, get outside and hit a guy over the top for a first down. Problem was there was a holding because uh, Tucker Ashcraft just straight up tackled Abdul Carter. And it was one of the more blatant holdings you're ever going to see, uh, which I don't think he needed to do because Abdul Carter was far enough away from the play that I don't think it would have made an impact either way. So, you know, again, like when you look at what he did, there's zero excuses for the interception in the third quarter. No, not even a little bit of an excuse. That was 100 percent his fault. Absolutely stupid play. Dude ought to be slapped inside the head off of that one. Like there's no, in no world was that a good decision. I'm not, there's, I'm not even trying to defend that one. Outside of that, Locke was the furthest thing from the problem of this team on Saturday. 
So I actually really like your grade. I, I would also say kind of C minus ish. And I, and I want to get into why I think that maybe isn't good enough next, but I agree. I don't think he was an F either. Like you look at the pass to CJ Williams, the one down the seam to Pauling. Um, a couple and of one thing I wanted to say, because everybody's, you know, the big thing is we need to get Tretch more involved. Tretch had two plays in a row with drop passes. Yeah, I agree. And, and they were on his hands. So it's like that, that second got, pass. There's got to be some, there's got to be some level of ownership with that. That, that second pass to Tretch feathered in between those defenders was a beautiful pass. Like, that was a beautiful throw. The first one was in the flat, right? We're referencing that one. That was an obvious drop. And then he feathered another one down the field on a seam but kind of with two defenders on him. I thought that was a beautiful throw. Tretch has to catch I mean, that. Tretch, Dupree would, Tretch would tell you that. Like, <laughs> Tretch would tell you he would catch that. Like, it was tougher, mm -hmm. but yeah, 100%. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit about where where the issues are on offense. If, if we agree Locke was a C, where are the other issues? Can it get fixed going forward? We're going to talk about it next on Locked On Badgers. But first, a very quick word from our friends of the show over at Game Time. Game Time remains the number one source for all your ticketing needs. Again, if you were there this weekend, you know we used Game Time to hook our boy D'Angelo up with tickets. His very first experience at Camp Randall. And it was, listen, win, lose, or draw. A good night game against a really high-quality opponent in Camp Randall. What a game for your first game in Camp Randall. Are you kidding me? I didn't have that for my first one. I think we played Purdue. Um, I think my first – it was Indiana-Purdue, my first Camp Randall experience uh, with my parents. He got Penn State at night, and we got those tickets on game time. Quick, fast, easy. We transferred the tickets at Scani's. It was incredible. Download the Game Time app today. Use code Locked On for $20 off. Snake the tickets without distress with Game Time. Download the app today. Create the account. $20 off with code Locked On College. Terms to apply again. Create an account. Reading code Locked on college for $20 off. All right, let's jump back into this with Curtis. Talk a little bit about um, – we, we got to keep talking about the offense, I think, because I, I think the fundamental question for a lot of Badger fans here is, is Locke the guy? Can he be the guy? And I think you and I maybe look at it a little differently. I agree. He wasn't, he wasn't the only issue against Penn State by far. I thought the offense line issues, we talked about receiver drops. We couldn't run the ball at all. My question for you, and this is where I'm starting to struggle with Locke. Outside of decision-making, we talked about the pick. You can't throw that pick. Uh, I struggle in the sense of I don't know if he's good enough to elevate anything. In terms of, like, if the running game isn't there, can Locke still win a game? If the if the receivers aren't good enough, can Locke still win a game? There's other quarterbacks because they're mobile. They can make things happen. I just don't – I'm not saying that guy's easy to find either. He's not. We've seen that he's not. I just wonder if he's a little physically limited where the rest of the pieces have to be good enough for him. So, you know, first things first. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's definitely physically limited. I don't think I'm going to debate you there. I mean, it, it's, it's clear he's got physical limitations. But let me take a step back and ask you this, because we actually had the same conversation literally a year ago. And I don't know if you remember this. It was one of the first podcasts I was on. And I asked, uh, we said, do we need to go get a guy in the portal? And I said, I don't know. Maybe we just roll with Locke and roll in the next season. Let me ask you something. If we de never got Tyler Van Dyke, and we let Locke have the entire offseason to gel with the offensive team that we have right now, the ones, and in, 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 in really take ownership of this team, which the team loves him. I mean, it's, it is true that the team likes him. So, you know, is is do you think we would have been in a better position? Do you think Locke would be playing better if we did that than he is now? Yeah, 100%. Like his reps, okay. reps are going to help a guy like him. I, I, sure. I, don't, I wouldn't argue that. Yep. So that goes to my whole point because – you're right. Finding a quarterback that can actually elevate this team in the way I think fans want it elevated is well, with the portal. It's not impossible, but it's incredibly difficult. The only quarterback Wisconsin has ever had that could win a game on his own if the rest of the team didn't show up was Russell Wilson. That was literally the only quarterback that could ever do that. Today's day and age, Russell Wilson in the portal would be like three million dollars. Like oh, it wouldn't even be sport. it wouldn't even be close. Right. And so, you know, you look at something like that. It's like, can you get a Russell Wilson? Yeah, if you could, you get him. But I have yet to hear a donor or a fan or a famous, you know, uh, celebrity or a former NFL player or anybody attached to Wisconsin at all offer anything remotely close to that. So to think that we can go and get the next Cam Ward is just a pipe dream. So now you're kind of rolling the dice. What are we going to get in the portal? I encourage you to look at teams that brought in transfer quarterbacks this year and looked at their records. Let's let's take another example. Daquan Finn at Baylor. He was a guy that we were looking at heavily. Why? Because he could run. Well, he gave us an option that 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 Locke didn't have, right? Or maybe a Will Howard, right? Will Howard can run. He's a gamer. He can play hard. Well, Will Howard got a million dollars to go to Ohio State. And at Ohio State, he's done fine. He's not 
great. He's not the best part of their offense. You know, he's just doing fine. Would a guy like Will Howard elevate this offense? No, it, he just adds an extra layer of running, but he can't elevate the offense because he doesn't know the offense at the level of lock does. Well, let's look at a Daquan Finn. Well, you don't even got to look at a Daquan Finn. Baylor's struggling right now, right? Mm -hmm. He would not elevate this offense either. So then it's like, okay, well, what are your options here? Do we want to try to go and get another guy, split reps again in the offseason, try to, in short term, teach this guy the system again, do this for the third year in a row, come into the season with a different guy who doesn't know the system as well as Locke does, and then expect him to try to win because maybe he can run a little better. To me, that's just, that's, that's folly. That's asinine. Why would you do that? That makes no sense. Instead, what you can do is say, hey, look, Locke, this is the second year row you got thrown in in the middle of the season when you weren't expecting to get thrown in because our quarterbacks got injured. And you know the offense really well, but you've never really had time to practice it in the offseason, which is the most important time for a quarterback to practice being good at the offense is the offseason, right? Maybe we give you a shot here and we bank on the fact that we brought in a guy we really believe in in Mabry and that he develops too, such that next year we come into it with a quarterback who knows what the hell he's doing, who can run the offense. And here's the other thing I was going to say about that, because you say, what does he do to elevate the offense? If you watch the All-22, every single RPO key he made was the correct decision. Every single one. The, the pass was not an RPO decision. That was just a dumb decision. But every RPO call, handoff, pass the ball, was objectively the correct decision. The problem was a couple different things. And, and we'll go into what I think the rest of the offensive issues were. One was that our center play and our guard play. I want to I want to just push back on a couple points you made on, on... – Unlock, which I think was a really well reasoned argument. By the way, it's one of the reasons I love having you on here. Uh, I think you believe you think ball, you know ball, and, and you articulate it really well. And everything you're saying is true. There's no guarantee you go to the portal and get a, be a better quarterback. I think the problem is if you believe that lock may be a limiting factor. And I'm not saying everybody does. I'm just saying if if that's the thought, it doesn't mean you have to go out and get a Russell Wilson in the portal. You can get a B type quarterback and still improve because they but give you another. That's my thing. It's like a B quarterback. How is that different than what we have with Lock? What because he's not a, and a, and a, and a focus. Locke's not a B. He doesn't have to be. He's a quarterback. If he can run a, the offense effectively and no, no, make but he's plays on the right reads and we can catch the passes. No, but you're missing my point, though. He's not running it effectively because he's turned the ball over too much and he doesn't give you anything on the ground. That That's kind of my, my point is he's not a B court. We just both gave him a C. But for here's, here's my oh, argument is he gives you so more you in the air. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You can go out and maybe get something better without having to find a Russell Wilson because we agree. That's a unicorn. You're not going to get that guy. But you need to get better play than than what Brainlock's giving you. And oh, I, I agree. I, I'll say I'll say this too, and I'll take a step and he back. He helped by Tyler Van Dyke. He had the offseason to work on his. Well, his game no, I'll, I'll, I'll say this: Tyler Van Dyke was a fifth year senior. Okay, he's played a lot of football. He's got a lot mm -hmm. of tools. I don't think anybody would say he was lightening it up last year at Miami, but he's got capability, right? Locke is still a redshirt sophomore. People say, well, he's third year in the system. Technically, he's the second year in the system because what they did at uh, Mississippi State, completely different. He also apparently didn't work out at Mississippi State. I, I don't know. Figure that one out. But um, this is a second year in this system, okay? I don't know if their evaluation of Tyler Van Dyke was accurate in the sense that I don't think the team was better with him at quarterback, like at all. I saw nothing from him as quarterback that gives me any indication that that was the right decision. He wasn't particularly fast. He wasn't particularly elusive. I know people said that in practice. It's mostly just because on certain read options, you just take it. And he was so big, he could get up the field maybe six or seven yards before he got tackled. It gave you something in that sense. He wasn't elusive. But he maybe wasn't was giving you such – do you know how many deep passes were missed in the first half of the season against teams at the quality of the Purdue, the Rutgers, the Northwesterns we played? There were wide open guys streaking on the field. The same thing happened last year with Mordecai. It was the exact same – like, it's like deja vu. I'm watching it all over again. Why? Because he's not looking at the field. He barely yeah. knows what he's supposed to do on the play. And, and you're yeah, telling really. me that a fifth-year guy who's smart comes in here, and this is the second time we've done this, has the same issue, and another guy who's maybe B-level is going to come in and somehow it's going to be better? Unless we're getting maybe. someone that's like from a Longo protege, I just it don't might see not how be. that happens. It might not be, but my point is maybe there's not a great answer then. And maybe the, maybe the, the answer is maybe, maybe Metor takes a big step this offseason. No, I think he the has. answer is – Lock goes in the next season and actually gets a freaking offseason to work with this offense so we can get better in that way. Let me let me let me go back on this again. I, I, I want to bring this one up because this is something that I think about a lot. Um, 2019 going in 20, 2018 was a bad year, right? We were seven and five mm -hmm. uh, down year for us. Um, you know, we lose Hornybrook with uh, concussion, you know, kind of the end of the season. Jack Cohn comes in. Jack Cohn's a sophomore, right? 
the first few starts of Jack Cohn, he looked like a deer in headlights. He was bad. He yeah. was five uh, touchdowns, three picks, and he had like four yep. fumbles, including two in the Northwestern game, one that basically lost us the game. He, he was not good at all. No, Mertz, was coming in, Mertz was coming in in 2019. And Badger fans, if they had the option to go to the portal and find a better quarterback, 100% we're going in the portal finding another quarterback because Cohen ain't it. He's been here two years. He doesn't know the offense. He fumbled at Northwestern. We lost the game. He's not going to win us anything, right? Fast but you didn't forward. know Cohen had more upside than Locke. He was a little faster, he had a little more, more athleticism more. than Locke. More athletic. I don't know so if I would say he had more upside. His well, arm's about the same. You have more upside if you're a better athlete at quarterback, though. Like, and that's that's where fans will look at a guy like that and say, let's give him a little bit more time because he does have the ability fans to give you something. Fans did not say that about – fans wanted Merce to start all of 2019. The whole well, season no, they agree. wanted Merce to start. I agree. And, and the other thing about that is he's been our best quarterback since Russell Wilson. So it's like, oh. you, 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 yeah. yeah. So you look at these okay. things, and 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 yeah, in a vacuum, yeah. Mer you know, Braden can't run. We just lost to Penn State. He was looking terrible. It was October a week ago. Okay, so people need to chill out a little bit, especially if they haven't watched the film again. Because I'm telling you right now, he was not the issue. We could have won the game with him. The issue was other things, and we can get to that in a minute. I know, uh, you know, we're 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 moving on time here. We do need to take a quick break. And, and honestly, this is why I love Abgar Son going back and forth as my kids wrestle above me, and I hope nothing gets broken. Um, and I'll also point this out, and this is something I think we'd both agree on. The season's not over. Like, let's see how Locke plays the no, rest absolutely. of the year. And, and, then, and here's the thing. And we might be having a very different conversation in four games. Either way. 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. That could be a springboard, like, if Locke plays a little more consistently and this offense plays a little more consistently down the stretch. That's a springboard in the next year as well. So I want to be very clear. Like, there's a lot of football left in the season. All right, we got to take one quick break. We're going to come back, talk, just touch a little bit on Iowa, why this game is so important, and, and maybe some early thoughts on that one on Locked On Badgers. That's coming up next. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show. Then we'll jump back into our conversation with Curtis. Curtis, what is – all right, let's talk Iowa really quickly. Uh, I just want to start – Do you want to talk about the offense a little bit too before we got into that? So it depends. We have one segment left. I don't think we're going to have time for both of them. What do you what, what would you rather talk about? As well, no, I, I, uh, I'll say this objectively. What's going on, little man? Um, I haven't had a lot of time to look at Iowa uh, yet this week. Um, you know, I know that it's a it's it's every year Iowa's going to be a physical game. I don't think records always matter in this matchup. Um, it's going to be physical. It's going to be who can execute better, who can you know play and step up in the big moments. And um, Iowa's had some clunkers this year. They're 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 not the same Iowa team as last year. I think their offense is maybe a little better. Uh, but their defense is not what it's been. You know, they've been able to be had in in, in the secondary. Um, I think their their number one corner is is really good. But then after that, you know, they got a little bit of uh, they got a little bit of issues. So um, we'll see if we can exploit that. I think the number one thing we need to do this week is catch passes. If we can do that, you know, then maybe we can move the ball on offense. We can open it up and get a little bit of run game going. So I was interesting to me coming off that Northwestern game where hey, you got to be quiet, bud. You'll be quiet. Or they switch quarterbacks. Like Brandon Sullivan came in, like four scoring drives. I think he's a little better for them. They run the ball pretty well. Obviously, uh, averaging 7.84 yards per carry with the bell cow. I do think the defense is more good. Hey, you got to be quiet. Buddy. Oh, my gosh. I am sorry. I do think you got you to be more quiet. You got to be more quiet. Right, right, this is the, the magic of podcasting at home. Hey, 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 so I do think <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. we may just call this one. Um, Curtis, as always, man, I appreciate you. Uh, I am sorry for this for everybody listening. Um, we'll, we'll talk Iowa more this week on Wisconsin. And I appreciate everybody for tuning in. 